What's going on, CS students? Man, it's so good to see you all. It's crazy to think that we are in the third month of a brand new year. That's crazy. We're in March, man. And it's also the first day of March Madness. Come on, make some noise and represent whatever jersey you're wearing right now. Come on, make some noise at West Kendall, at Redlin Doral, everybody watching online. And of course, Palmetto Bay, man. Shout out to all of you. Well, man, well, you've caught us in a great time. It's going to be an amazing month filled with different things every single Wednesday. But also, we got something amazing coming up this month. Maybe you don't know about this, but we got something called Easter, Easter Resurrection Sunday that's coming up at the end of the month. It's going to be amazing. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about that today. By the way, if you don't know me, my name is Rob. I serve here as a student director for the West Kendall campus. And man, oh man, we're starting a brand new series today called After Life. Come on, say it with me. Say After Life. One more time so it sticks with you guys. Come on, say one, two, three, after life. You know, I, I love this time of, of the year, not just because it's springtime and, you know, some of us may be losing sleep because of daylight savings. But no, I really like this time of year because as we head into Easter, may, maybe you're doing this also in your life. Man, you can actually go to the Gospels and see the stories of Jesus alive and, and what he was doing during that time leading up to everything that's going to be celebrated in Easter. But man, we're doing this incredible series because I want everybody to know it's a lot, a lot easy for us as believers, as even here at CF students that we can come every single Wednesday or Sunday and man, it could become another Wednesday or it could become another Sunday or it could become another Easter. And God just put this on my heart. The gospel message and the resurrection of Jesus Christ has to be the most important thing to us and it can never get Old, okay, it can never get old. In fact, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and him dying for us and coming back to life, you and I are so loved. You and I are so loved by God. And today, I just want to put something from God's word in your heart that I hope you apply it to your life. All right, hope you guys are ready. We're going to go to our verse, two verses for you today, more like verse, a verse and a half. This is going to be in the book of 1 John chapter 4. The ending of verse 8 to, tap, uh, to verse 10. And it goes like this. It says, God is love. God is love. Verse 9, in this, the love of God was made manifest. In other words, this is how we see God's love among us. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Verse 10, in this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Wherever you are right now, can you just pray with me? Bow your head, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, God, for today, God, that we get to dive into your word. Remind us of this powerful message of the gospel, Lord. If anybody here, Lord, that is hearing this, God, is, is maybe they, they're feeling a little off, or maybe, God, they feel like you're far away, or maybe, God, they're forgetting how much you love them. Lord, use this word today to touch all of our hearts and remind us of why you love us so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Man, you know, see if students, you know, I, I was saying this at the beginning, but I'm going to be honest, this is really my favorite time of the year. I love everything leading up to Easter. I love reading the Bible stories and the Gospels as we head into these couple of weeks. I especially love that we get to wear our jerseys today and all the things coming up in March. But I don't know about you, but I don't think we understand a lot of times how important, how important Easter is for every single Christian. Like this should be an amazing celebration for anyone that says, I belong to Jesus. I don't think a lot of us even remember or understand that the Bible literally tells us that if Jesus did not die and come back to life, everything that we read about, everything that we do in church on a Sunday or on a Wednesday, or even the miracles that maybe you and I love to read about Jesus healing the blind and, and causing the paralytics to walk again and the blind to see and rising people from the dead, all those things would be in vain. They wouldn't matter if Jesus did not die and come back to life for us. You know, I, I, I'm sure that many of you, even leading up to, to Easter, maybe you're already seeing certain posts or images, or maybe you remember from last year's uh, Easter service. You know, everybody always posts a picture of like a cross, a cross and like, you know, an empty tomb or, 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 the, or, the, or the sunrise to symbolize, you know, it's the third day. And that's great. That's amazing. Like, if you're going to do that, please do that. Just don't make a meme about it, okay? Just, just, just do it, all right? 
But listen, the reason why I'm bringing that up is that, man, like this was not just an amazing event that happened 2000, over 2000 years ago that we get to remember and celebrate every single year. This is something that should be constantly in our minds and in our hearts every single day we get to live, see of students. Every single day we get to do what we do and come to, come to Wednesday night or go to Sunday or even as you're enjoying time with your family and your friends and your small group and you're out and about. Man, all of this is possible because there was one person that loved us so much that he gave his life for us and his name is Jesus. And I need to, be, I need to remind everyone here today and anybody watching online, listen, that is something to enjoy. That is something to celebrate. That is something that we need to be continued just to be in all of. Like this is the love of God in our life. This is the love of God in our life that someone, someone so perfect, someone so amazing would actually come down to this earth, leave heaven, right? And come down to earth, surrender everything, live as we live, suffer as we would suffer, go through everything that we, we could never go through and do it all in the name of love and all to win us back to him. Man, listen, that deserves celebration. That deserves some praise. Wherever you're watching this, man, just take a good five seconds to praise God for what he has done already in our lives. Man, and so I want you guys to write this down as our first point of today, just so we have this in the back of our heads, but also in the front of our hearts. Write this down as point number one, God sent Jesus out of love. God sent Jesus to us out of love. All right, we're gonna go back to that same verse. First John chapter four, eight through nine, it goes like this. It says, God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest. This is how we see God's love among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Man, I love that the Bible is so clear that God literally is love. He literally is love. That doesn't mean that he just created it. Like if you want to know, you want to know what love looks like, what it smells like, how, how it's supposed to be done, how it's supposed to uh, be, look at God. Look at at Jesus. Who was he? What did he do in the gospels? What did, he, what did he want to show the world? That is love. That's what he did. Okay. So by the way, I know we just ended a relationship series, but man, like go, go back to that, man. Be reminded how much God truly loves you by remembering, man, he sent his only son to die just for me. All right. Just for me. And man, you know, I, I often think about it, man. I know for a lot of us, maybe you're thinking like, Robert, I get it. God is love. I learned this in Sunday school. This is like God 101. But man, do, do, do we really understand or do we, do we all really understand how broken we were? Do we really understand how hopeless we were? You know, many of you already know the story of Adam and Eve. And in case you don't, when God created this world, he created humanity on the sixth day. And there was a beautiful relationship between the first uh, person born of humanity, which was Adam that God created. And then later on, Eve came into the picture. But then afterwards they sinned, right? God told them not to eat from a specific tree in the garden of Eden that God created. And they broke relationship, they broke fellowship. But more importantly, sin entered the world. Sin is everything that God has said, man, we're not supposed to do like lying, cheating, stealing, having a bad thought, uh, inappropriate thought you know, all these other things that are wrongful in this world that we can see on a day-to-day -day basis. These are things that God says, man, don't do it. But anyways, Adam and Eve, they, they committed this sin. And then from then on, the Bible says that everyone, including myself, including you, including your mom, including uh, our, our pastors here, everyone has sinned. There is no one, no one that is good. And maybe, maybe you just need to be reminded today that, man, like, God knew that we weren't able to save ourselves. God knew that we weren't able, gonna be able to live everything out that he wrote in his word, even, even from the Old Testament or even from the beginning of time. Like, he knew, he knew we were gonna fail. But that didn't stop him from loving us and that didn't stop him from saving us. And maybe somebody just needs to hear this right now, wherever you're at in your campus or watching this, Whatever problem or situation, whether you got yourself into a problem or situation 
or whether something is happening right now, right now in your life and it's a problem or situation, what makes you think that if God, who is the same God yesterday, today, and forever, at the beginning of time, saw us messing up already in the Garden of Eden, whatever mess up is happening in your life, what makes you think that God's love can penetrate it, God's love can overcome it, God's love is not there with you right now at this very moment. See a student, child of God, be encouraged. God's love has no limits, has no limit, and it's on you right now at this very moment. Man, and you know what this really reminds me of as well? This reminds me of a, of, of a verse that, that I remember in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It goes like this. It says, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. You know, I know today is Jersey Day. It's Jersey Day, and I hope everybody's out here representing. I hope everybody's out here looking all amazing with different colors and everything like that. Um, but I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, when I, I, I really love soccer. I really love soccer. This is one of my favorite jerseys that I have. It's from a German club, a German club in uh, Dortmund. It's called Borussia Dortmund, the club. It's very yellow, I'm told, the shirt, but it's okay. Um, but I will never forget this. When I was a kid growing up in middle school, one day my mom told me that she knew a very famous soccer player and actually soccer legend. His name is Nene Cobias. We have a picture uh, of him. He's a, he's a, he, look at him, man. He's amazing. He's got, he's got cast for days, right? Uh, man, so this guy is a soccer legend. He's like the Messi of Peru, all right? Just, just for some of you to compare it or, or the Ronaldo of Peru, if, you're, if you believe Ronaldo's the goal like I do. Anyway, he's amazing. He's incredible. I, and my mom just had his contact on her number. I don't know how they know each other. I guess like family, friends or whatever. And I'll never forget this. One day in, in, in my middle school season, she was like, hey, do you want to meet Nene Cubillas? Do you want to meet this incredible football player? And I was like, Psh, yes. And he's, like, he's like, okay, well, he's having a free camp, um, a, a soccer camp. Go ahead. Your name's already there. Go for it. And I remember going and he, he's like over 70 years old now. But I'm going to be honest, that guy can still play. Like he did not lose a step. Like he, he's there like making kids fall. He has no shame, right? He has no shame doing everything. And I just remember, man, for, for those two days of that camp, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I loved it. But what I didn't know was at the end, everybody got a shirt, got like a, a jersey. And then he signed it. He signed every single one. It was amazing. We all stood in line. Like I remember being a kid and everybody was trying to like bump each other. Like I want to be the first one, you know, to say hi and to get it because um, we all got to hang out with him. And, you know, it made me think about something. All the jerseys that you and I are wearing today, every single one from basketball to football to, to soccer or whatever sport or whatever thing you're wearing, you know, it's not really yours. And by that, I don't mean that you didn't pay for it. I hope you paid for it. I really do. But what I'm saying is you're probably wearing a jersey that represents something or someone else. You're wearing something that represents someone or something else. Maybe you're wearing a Messi jersey. Maybe you're wearing a, a, a Miami Heat jersey or a Tyler Hero jersey or Jimmy Butler. Maybe you're wearing a Tua jersey and maybe we're still mourning for the Dolphins, right? We're, we're wearing something that really, even though we paid for it, isn't really ours. And maybe you've even seen like maybe sometimes at the end of a game, like a, a, like a real player will come to the fans and they'll give them their own game jersey. And like that's like a, a beautiful special moment. Well, the reason why I'm saying this is that, is that I want you to understand Jesus gave us himself and he took our sins. It was like if, it was like if I, if when I was a kid with Nene Cubillas, he gave me his own jersey to wear, right? He gave me his jersey specifically that I didn't know I was going to get. And then he was like, hey, put it over what you're wearing right now. And I, and I want you guys to really let this sink in because you know, it's really funny. We all want to wear these jerseys because they represent something bigger than us. They, they have more value than, 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 than because of the name or the brand that we're wearing. It's the same thing with Jesus. Do you know that you're wearing something, maybe not physically right now, that looks like Jesus, but you're wearing something in a spiritual sense that covers you from head to toe of the blood of Jesus that lets you know that you are a child of God, man, that you are loved, that you are forgiven, man, that that God is with you yesterday, today, and forever, that you are blessed and highly favored, that this whole world belongs to the Lord and you got nothing to fear. There's no need for anxiety. There's no need for depression. There's no need for any of these things because the Lord is with you. 
Like, do you know that you are wearing that right now because somebody chose out of love to give it to you even though he knew and we all know we do not deserve anything, anything. And just to put it out there a little bit deeper for all of us watching and listening into this, I know John 3.16 lets us know that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that if anyone believes in him, they shall not perish but have everlasting life. I want to let everybody know this gospel message is beautiful and it's beautiful also because not that just Jesus came, but also because he had to suffer for us. He had to suffer what we call the wrath of God. That's what we deserve. And someone so perfect and so holy chose to become sin who knew no sin so that he, we, right? So that he could give us his righteousness, his goodness, his peace, his love, his joy, his gentleness, his kindness. All this now belongs to you as a gift. So wear it proudly, CF student. Wear it proudly every single day of your life. Don't just wear it proudly on a Wednesday. Don't just wear it proudly on a Sunday. Don't just wear it proudly as we head into Easter. Wear it every single day because this was given to us out of this beautiful place of true love that it didn't matter what we did. It all matters on what he's already done for you and for I. Amen? All right, I wanna go back to this verse because I want you to know how you can practically do this every single day of your life. First John 4, 8 through 9 says like this. It says, God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live. Everybody say live. Say it like you mean it. Come on, say live. Very good. Live. Live through Jesus. Live through Jesus. And so maybe you're like, all right, what does that look like, Rob? How do I do that on a daily basis? Do I have a shirt that has to say, I love Jesus? You could. You 100% could, but you know, just make sure that you keep it pure, pure and white. Um, now, let me be serious. The verse that actually answers that question is this. 1 John 4, 11 to 12 says this, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If, everybody say if. Come on, say that like you mean, say if. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. In other words, CF students, none of us has seen God yet until we get to heaven, right? But the moments that we see God show up is when you and I are loving to one another, when you and I are kind to one another, when you and I are forgiving to one another, when you and I are generous to one another, when you and I care for one another, when you and I are humble to each other, when you and I would rather take the long road with you and be patient with you than be angry and upset and try to do things our own way. And so practically, how does this look like? Start with the people that you see on a daily basis your mom, your dad, your siblings, your uncles, your aunts, your small group, your small group leader, your, your, your people in your small group. I hope you already know their names. I already hope you have your WhatsApp group chat and your Discord and your gaming tags. I hope you have all of that. Pray for them, love them, care about them. When it's their birthday, turn up for them. If they're in need, be there for them. But don't do this because I'm telling you. Don't do this because they deserve it. Don't do this because you deserve it. Do it because there was someone who did it for us without even having to be asked. Do this because there's someone that loves us so much that he doesn't know how to stop loving us despite all of our mess ups and our mistakes. This is the love of God. That if we truly understand, man, God loved me. Even if we were the only person on this earth, if you were the only person on this earth and God still would have been having to send his son for you because of our sin, Jesus would have gladly still have been whipped and hung on that cross for you and I. Get this into your heart, into your head. Because the Easter message that we're going to be hearing about in a couple of weeks, it's amazing, it's beautiful, but it starts every single day with you and I. Remembering and celebrating what Christ has done for us. Because we needed it. And it was done out of love. And we can relive it every single time that we love and put each other first. Man, if you guys don't remember, last month in February, we were actually able to go and serve the community. We washed some cars, and some of you actually baptized and washed me like multiple times. It was funny. Uh, we have a ton of videos for it. 
But listen, those are moments where we can love people practically. Every single Wednesday, you can love someone by inviting somebody to church or even just loving your small group and loving your small group friends. Also, every single Sunday, 1045 small group, another opportunity to love people and to care about people. It's very practical CS students. And also, I would highly recommend that if maybe you're, you're a little shy or introverted, you're like, man, like, I'm not really about that. You know, learn. Ask other friends about it. Get some help. It's always easier when we do things together, not just apart. All right. I want to end with this. I want to end with this. This is our final point of tonight. We're not just called to celebrate and remember God's love. But it's on point number two. It says celebrate and tell others about his love, right? Celebrate and tell others about his love. 1 John 4, 19 says this. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us loved us. I don't know how many times I think I've said love in this passage, but I'm going to say it again. The reason why we're doing all of this, why we stand on the stage, why I'm here, why you're here, why we're listening to this, is because there's someone that loved us so much that he gave everything for us. We're never going to be able to repay it. Never are we ever going to be able to repay it. And thank God that we can't. So yes, enjoy it, celebrate, be reminded today that you are so loved by God, so cared for, so forgiven, that he's a God of multiple chances, that he's a God that is constantly forgiving and merciful, like his word says, new are them every single morning, that he never leaves you or forsake you, that he's a father to the fatherless. All these promises are yours because you have chosen to give your life to Jesus. And don't forget that there could be someone sitting next to you that doesn't know that they don't know what you have, that they don't know that Jesus loves them too. And we walk around daily with tons of people that we don't know. Probably for a lot of you, every single day in your own middle schools and high school schools and even in your SAS programs and, and things that you do in dual enrollment. Man, you guys have multiple opportunities, multiple opportunities to share your faith. So I want to challenge you because today is not just a day for you to be reminded of how much love the Lord has for you and by the resurrection and by sending Jesus, but it's to also challenge you, tell someone about it. I want us to do a, a quick challenge in small group. I know everybody has a phone. All right, everybody has a phone. Take it out, wave it at me. Wave it at me. There we go, there we go. So you have the flashlight on. I'm just kidding. No, you don't. Take out your phone. And I want you in your small group, in your small group, small group leaders, I'm gonna need your help. Level up students, I need you to lean in on this. I need you guys to be leading from the front with this. I'm gonna do this too. We're all gonna make a quick 10 second video just saying these words. God's love has, and then we get to, and then you fill in whatever you would like to say. So I'm gonna say it again. We're all gonna take a quick video in our small group. It's gonna be part of your small group questions and, and, and challenges that you're just all together gonna make a video and compile it together. Small group leader, you may have to be the one to edit this unless you know somebody that knows how to use iMovies. And I want us to collect them all and I want us to post it on social media. If you wanna make a TikTok about it, if you wanna do anything else about it, go for it. But the reason why I want us to challenge, I wanna challenge us to do this is because more people need to hear what's happening on a Wednesday, on a Sunday in our lives as believers because we are so, so loved by our God. So again, very simple. In your small group time, take some time, five, 10 minutes, take out your phone, everybody just record a video with the words starting with God's love has, and then, put, and then say God's love has changed me. God's love has transformed me. God's love has saved me. God's love has humbled me. God's love has transformed me. Whatever it is that God's love has done for you, just take a quick video, put it together, and then post it on all your social medias, tag CF students, and spread the word spread the word that we're gonna be celebrating and remembering Easter in a couple of weeks. Man, before we pray, I know there's many of you probably watching and here and you were like, I thought this was just gonna be a Jersey night and that's okay, cause it is. But specifically, I wanna let you know something. If this is your first time here or first time in a while, or you still have questions about God. Like I've been saying all this time, God loves you so much, probably more than you could ever understand or know but I want you to know it has not changed. And if you're here today, it's for a reason. And if you're listening to this, it's because God wants to tell you once again how much he loves you. The word of God is so clear. Everybody has made mistakes. We've all sinned, the Bible says. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. There's only one that hasn't, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. And it's very clear. If today, 
If today you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you want to be with him, because you're understanding in your heart that you need a Savior, that you need saving, that you know there's so many things wrong in this world and you need help, call on him today. The Bible is very clear. It says, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Right now, I'm going to have every head to be bowed and every eye be closed. If you already have a relationship with Jesus, pray for those that don't and ask the Lord to continue just to give you that fire in your heart and remember how much he loves you because of this resurrection that we're celebrating in a couple weeks. But for those of you that maybe you want to make the decision today to accept Jesus, that you want his love, that you want his forgiveness, you want eternity with him. I mean, I just want you to repeat after me. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's your faith right now. It's the faith that you have to call upon Jesus and ask him to save you. Repeat it to me. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I thank you for Jesus. I believe he came. I believe he lived. I believe he died. And I believe he rose again just for me. I repent of my sins. Help me to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's make some noise for anybody that made that decision to give their life to Jesus, man. Man, the word of God lets us know that people are rejoicing in heaven. The angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. Listen, I hope you have a great time in our March Madness. We hope to see you next week. It's going to be amazing. God bless you guys. I love you.